welcome to another episode of the Hollywood Critics Association Longbox. My name is Tessa Smith, and I have my lovely co-host with me. I'm Jonita Davis. Hi, Tessa. <laughs> Hi, it's so exciting to talk to you today. You guys might notice we're not live today. Sorry, but nope. that's because we have some super exciting stuff for you. Yeah. We were lucky enough to interview Jim Mickle about Sweet Tooth. More on that later. Uh, mm-hmm. But before we get into Sweet Tooth, we've got to talk. We got to talk Loki. We got to talk Loki. Oh, I didn't notice the shirt. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Listen, oh my gosh. We were both lucky enough to see Loki early. And as you guys know, on last week's show, we gave you our initial reactions, but uh, we weren't really able to get into anything at all, really review wise, because it was still right. under embargo. Yeah. But now the first episode is out. The second one comes out tomorrow. And we're excited to give you all of our thoughts. And I know that Joe has been chomping at the bit to discuss some stuff. So why don't you go ahead? Okay. So um, first of all, that, that I, I, not, I didn't expect any of it, any of it at all. Um, the aesthetics of it was just all like, like, like I said before, you have the old and the new mixed up. Why, why is, why is like the most important information happening um, on two TVs, you know, between people? <laughs> why are we still, I mean, but we can like, make portals into different times and spaces why are we pulling lovers for the elevator you know (laughs) but people yeah but people can get like just kind of transport wherever they want i am not understanding (laughs) (laughs) they just have this like 70s feel the whole thing and it's so crazy because the tva is very clearly like its own thing it is yeah but like they're crazy powerful so yeah it is a little weird it's definitely yeah. a little weird. Now, uh, during the Loki junket, um, they were saying they got their inspiration from stuff like Seven, uh, which was oh. very interesting. And I'm like, oh, okay, I see that though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so I get it, right? They've got this kind of crime thriller type vibe that they're trying to to accomplish, which I think they're doing a good job of. Yes. And, um, so I'm, I'm listen. I'm excited to see where this goes, but I'm excited to dive in to episode one with you because there was some. They do a good job of like catching you up in this episode, don't you think? Yes. Um, I was surprised to see that it starts like right when like like it starts immediately. I guess I shouldn't have been because I mean th- all the shows Marvel have done it, right? Done. Yeah, Marvel's like, okay, let's catch up. Well, except WandaVision, because WandaVision was like uh you, I have no idea what's happening. Yeah, it was like it was like episode what six or seven before you like got caught up. Yeah. Um but but yeah, I just I was amazed that we're just jumping right in there and then um you know, you, you see him, you see him get the Tesseract and, and it's just uh, uh, the comedy of it. Okay. He can't <laughs> keep his hands on it. And then, you know, when they arrest him and, you know, take him into the TVA, they, you know, the, the, the guard or the hunter, or I think, you're, I think they're hunters. Yeah. The hunter just kind of slaps it on the desk and gives it to the receptionist and the receptionist is like, what is this? What do I do with yeah. it? And it's I'm thinking it's the thing terrible. that can destroy the whole world. Okay. That's, that's all it is. Just, you know, <laughs> put it somewhere, make it a paperweight. Um. <laughs> you know what I loved too, though, real quick, before we go a little bit further is that he immediately, so he shows up in the desert and he sees people and his first instinct is like to rule them. He's like, yes. looks around for a rock and like climbs up on the rock and is like, I am Loki, God of Asgard. And it's like, yes. whoa, <laughs> it's your first instinct is people, I'm going to rule them. Mm-hmm. Like, Loki, you got some issues. Like, let's be Yeah, honest. it's like, calm down. And they're like, okay, okay, we're whatever, dude. You know, <laughs> no, and it's kind of like, that. you just walked out of uh, nowhere. So, you know, <laughs> let's just figure that out first. <laughs> I know, they're like, why are you here? What's going yeah. on? Yeah, <laughs> who are so, you again? Yeah, I love that he said his glorious purpose, which is like his line. He says it twice in this episode, which had me happy. But I'm just, so yeah. And then I don't know. I, I, okay. So I have to tell you that when I saw the hunters and I saw like the the main hunter, like the head one of the squad, mm-hmm. this black woman who's curvy and had her armor even built around her curves, yes! she could move, you know, um, didn't look like she was squashed in there. Um, so I just. <laughs> I really liked it. And then the fact that Loki was scared of her. <laughs> like, he was, he was too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she was, and she was not having any of his BS. Like she just kind of like looked at him. Like whenever he would try to say something or try something, she just looked at him like he was annoying her or something, you yeah. know, I just, you know, and she, he, there was like no 
fangirling that this is like a god or you know the brother of a god the son of a god or anything like that godlike i know they knew who he was and what what role he's had in this world right didn't matter to her you know um you're a variant i have to collect you that's all we got to do don't talk to me because whatever you're saying i'm not gonna listen to anyway i loved it (laughs) i love her (laughs) so amazing and i know we touched on it just a tiny bit while we could but Mm -hmm. uh, last week but what i love about her she's just so strong and powerful and in your face like she don't Mm -hmm. care at all she's not holding anything back no i love that about this character i think she's Hunter B-15, I think is her. Hunter B-15. And her name is uh, Wanmi Masaka, Masaku. Um, And she's like, she's in, uh, well, it says on IMDb that she's in all six episodes. Yeah. So that's not a spoiler. It's over there. (laughs) You know, I'm reading all the Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The junket she was talking about, because this character is a new character, not based off any comic Mm -hmm. at all. And she said she loved that about it because she felt like there wasn't a lot of pressure to like, She's like, I'm going to give you what she is and you're going to have to accept it. Like, you're not going to be mm-hmm. able to compare it with anything, which I love that she said that. Mm-hmm. But then she did go, but there is the pressure of being in the MCU because, like, it's the MCU. <laughs> and I was it's like, yeah, yeah, I get that. But I just love how she's yeah. like, I'm not going to be compared to a comic book character. So, like, this is who she is and you deal with it. I loved it. She's, like, paving away. And, you know, like I said last time, I love the fact that okay, we know this is going to be about Loki and you've got Mobius in it and you've got, you know, all these white guys, you know. I love that they, like, have this prominent Black woman, this new character. They made a character for her. Okay, are you paying attention, DC? Yeah. Are you paying attention? <laughs> they made a character for her and they made her to where she's powerful. She takes up space. I mean, she's not the scenery. She's not mm-hmm. in the background. She like she <laughs> loki actually you know has to basically you know contend with her yeah. which he he's like rather not um <laughs> even mobius owen wilson's character is kind of a little looks like he's a little scared of her you know mm-hmm. and she's like this she's this dark skin curvy natural hair black woman that you don't see you don't see them anywhere and then we have um another black woman in the show yes. um Love her from if you guys have um, watched, um, you know, some she's her name is uh, Gugu Mabatha Raw. Um, she plays Ravana Rinslayer. Yes. Ravana yeah. Ravona. I don't know. Ravana. I, Ravana? Know Ravana? I read things in a different. Voice. I know. It's like, it's like, yes. Thanos, like I've been reading it for years. I don't know how to pronounce it. Right. It's, it's, right. I have my own pronunciation problem. in my head. When you're, when you're a comic book fan, pronunciation is just out the window. Yeah, there's a lot of times where it's like, oh, that's how you say that. Right. But then I still say it the way I've read it for years because you just can't help it. So, that's yeah. Like- yes. But she's like, she's the judge. I mean, so you have Hunter 15, who's, you know, curvy, strong. She's, the, she's, you know, wherever she is, she is the focus of, you know, the room. But then you have tiny, um, <laughs> tiny, so tiny, tiny Nirvana. She is. She's skinny and tiny. But when she opens her mouth, you can tell she's not taking anything from anybody. Another black woman who takes up space, who is prominent in the story and who doesn't have to fight the men for, you know, for attention, uh, you know, screen attention. Like your your eyes are on her whenever she's talking. And, you know, even that little Owen Wilson flirt moment where he has to like does that flirting. You can tell he's doing it to bring her bring her down like she's too strong. Yeah. You know, he, he's kind of scared of her. He's got to do that flirting to got to, you know, okay. He's like, to... I'm looking up to you. I'm yeah. all looking up to you. Feels yeah. appropriate. I like Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Always looking up to you. Thing. I, th- I thought that killed me. I'm like, oh, my God. Um, I love it. And I know I've been going on about this, but I, I do. Th- I mean, this is a year where we've had Warner Brothers come out with movie after movie after movie. And there's been no prominent black women. I just wrote about that with when yeah. Army of the Dead came out. No prominent black women at all. I think in Army of the, of the Dead, like the black women were like refugees <laughs> and zombies. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's it. I mean, so I mean, like we're like a good percentage of the popula- population people. I mean, we're not quite twenty percent of the population, but we're creeping up there. So you know, we, we should there should at least be one of us. And there's two in Loki. Two. two. Yeah. And that's what I love how different they are. And again, I said this last week, but mm-hmm. we have, you know, because like we said, um, this other character, the judge here, she's more subtle, but she's still just as strong. And her stuff mm-hmm. comes out 
And we see a little bit more of her, um, a fair amount more of her, I guess, in mm-hmm. in episode two, which we can't really talk about too much. No. Uh, but I will just say that I love where she's going because at the end of episode mm-hmm. two, you can tell she's really about to just dive headfirst into this series. And I can't, mm-hmm. I'm so excited. And something that's exciting about her now, she is in the comic, but this is more of an origin story for her, um, which oh, okay. we talked about in the junket as well. This is stuff that's not really been in the comics. So she was excited to be able to play that part of the character, you know, and it's again, mm-hmm. not as much pressure. You're not, I mean, of course, people are always going to compare. That's how comic book people are. I get mm-hmm. it. I do it myself. Um, yeah. But I always do appreciate whatever people bring to the screen, usually, mm-hmm. uh, especially when it's a favorite character of mine, which she's, I don't know too much about her in the comic. I haven't read a ton, but just this performance has me wanting to go back and like really dive into this character because she's so good. I just love she takes up a presence on screen, even though she like, does. she's like this tiny little mm-hmm. <laughs> little thing, adorable tiny little thing. Yeah. But, like she opens her mouth and she's like, Yeah, I'm here. Uh-huh. I'm, you know, she's the person in between. Um, I mean, she's she's Mobius's boss. Like it's so awesome. Yeah, and her. there's no she's there's no question when you see her. Oh, go no ahead. Question. Yeah. No, I was just gonna say yeah. she's in between the timekeepers and Mobius, you know, she's she's that link. She's yeah. like takes directive from them like she said you know i take directive from them and i and i give it to you Mm -hmm. Um, and i love that she's high ranking and she's you know not not going to take any crap from anybody and i love when as soon as she opens her mouth you know who the authority is in the room i mean she doesn't have to give an explanation or a backstory or put on any kind of special garb because she doesn't really wear anything special that like it shows that she it's just that she's in her, in her, you know, in her, in her speak speech and the way she presents herself, um, she just, you know, automatically who's, and then the way, the way Owen Wilson just kind of, you know, kind of backs down. Um, <laughs> yeah, so great. And I love that. He, I love that he interacts so well. Their chemistry is so good. Yes, that's what I was going to say. He's a great addition to the MCU because he's so perfect with everyone on screen, like his chemistry with her. And uh, well, with both of them that we just talked about, but also with Loki, like he's Mm -hmm. so good at like finding his spot in here and owning it, you know, like Mm -hmm. he's got that banter with several different characters. Yeah. Uh, But but also like in this first episode, he's really trying to bring Loki around and show him like, like he's messing with him a little bit, but he's like, oh, God of space. Yeah. Okay. That's that's a nice feather in your cap. And Loki's like, don't you mock me. He's like, I'm not, (laughs) I'm such a big fan of yours. And you can tell like, I just feel like there's, and I could be wrong. It could just be that they're both incredible actors, which they both are. But I feel like mm-hmm. so much of this has to be improv because it just feels like they're playing off each other so well. That's uh, what Tom it feels Hiddleston like. and Owen Wilson. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It feels that way. It feels that way. And I, because they've, you've got, they perfectly mesh that bureaucracy yeah. with yeah. the God superhero. So you've got this God superhero, you know, type of world meshing with <laughs> government yeah. <laughs> you know and it's like and they should clash but they don't and it's like it's, it's fascinating to watch them how that he kind of i don't know loki's like tries to like to you know make that god superhero thing go and he's just like okay man i'm not gonna you know harsh what you've got going on here but the reality of the thing is and and so that that's their whole vibe he i mean he's not gonna belittle him he's not gonna you know um be be forceful or rude but he's got a job to do you know and loki's yeah. like i know who i am man i know who i am i know who my daddy is yeah <laughs> wait till he finds out he's, i'm here you know <laughs> yeah man so. it's so good and that's what i love about loki in this i feel like there's and i'm so glad i did this in the first episode there's that turning point where loki kind of realizes it starts off when he sees all those infinity stones that they're like yeah we just use them as paperweights we get them all the time because Obviously, they're in a junk drawer. Okay, let's hold on for a minute. They're in a junk drawer, y'all. I know. Infinity, Infinity Stones in a junk drawer with pens and like I random know. paper clips. They're Infinity Stones. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense that anytime a timeline diverts from the sacred timeline, an Infinity Stone would be involved, right? Yeah. So he's like, we get a ton of them because obviously <laughs> is just amazing. And I think that's when Loki starts to think like, what? Like, what is this? Like, he's playing around with them. Now, there is some speculation online now that the episode has been released. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I went back and I watched and I paused and I'm watching. So some people think Loki took a time stone. He picked Ooh. it up. But then I listened and you hear like a clink, like he dropped it back mm-hmm. to the drawer. 
And then, mm-hmm. of course, the whole thing gets obliterated when Hunter B-15 zaps it. So mm-hmm. all those Infinity Stones are gone now. So I don't know if he took a Time Stone or not, because would it have power? Should he end up leaving the TVA? I think probably. I think probably. Um, I think he picked it up to see, okay, are they just rocks? I mean, he, yeah. he, just had, to, he had to feel it. He had to feel it. Is it just a rock at this point? <laughs> you I know? know. I don't <laughs> think he kept it. But that would I don't be think very he did. interesting, especially it being a Time Stone to see where that would go so who knows but i don't think he did because i heard a little clink and like i don't think he had anything in his pocket so he would have had oh. to have dropped it back into the drawer but we'll see in the future for that Dude, one. now i have to go look i know go back and listen because i think because i i watched it a few times and i thought did he but did he, you don't see him i feel like if he took it they would have shown and put it like in his pocket mm-hmm. or something or something out. yeah they would have well, shown something like that uh but he so he deals with that he's realizing this place is pretty like he says the tva is formidable right Mm -hmm. he's realizing oh infinity stones don't even work here like something's going on and then he goes back and he watches his life which is what got me i cried i can't help it when he sees his mom die which he had already seen earlier you know with when mobius showed him but then he sees his dad die but before his dad dies he tells him he loves him which is something loki struggles with forever i know thor tell him you know you're i I thought the world of you i've always thought we'd fight, fight side by side forever and then he mm-hmm. says, if you were here, I'd maybe even give you a hug. Maybe you're not so bad. And he says, I am here. I mean, he sees kind of his ideal future. I mean, not with his dad dying, but with his dad accepting him, right? Mm-hmm. His brother accepting him, him becoming close with his brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he sees him try to take on Thanos and, and be killed, you know? Mm-hmm. And he's kind of like, and that's the second time he mutters glorious, he says glorious purpose. You know, he laughs at mm-hmm. it. Like and he's laughing and crying, like, realizing like this is what my life is supposed to be so i kind of like that because i feel like it puts him in his place just a little bit just a little bit yeah and he and he realizes you know maybe this is like this is what his life was all about was his family and all this so um i was glad they showed that it did get me a little teary a little choked up oh yeah Um, yeah same 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 but i love that they stuck that in there and i thought that was a good first episode you know like let's Mm -hmm. let's put him through this arc let's start him down this path of will he have redemption you know so okay here's my first question of um um tessa the marvel stan um so um (laughs) okay (laughs) so they went through all that and it was emotional i got to hear you myself and i thought oh my gosh i thought this guy was just an a-hole this whole time and (laughs) maybe not but he if he's just a variant i know and he's not why are they wasting all this time on him? Well, I think uh, there's already heavy rumors and it's it was like confirmed and then taken back as confirmed that there's going to be a Loki season two. So I feel like, and this mm-hmm. is just the speculation, I can totally see them. Maybe by the end of this, he'll be working for the TVA. I mean, he's very good at what he does. Mm-hmm. He's good at figuring stuff out, um, yeah. kind of manipulating people. So I could mm-hmm. see him, if the TVA sticks around, which I feel like with only six episodes and us having seen two of them where they're going with it, it definitely could stick around and lead to us a second season. Um, Yes, it's a variant. There's absolutely no way unless with some audience with the timekeepers and if they change stuff all around, there's there's no way he can go back to that sacred timeline, that main timeline, because he dies in that timeline. Right. So I think... They know people love Loki. They know, you know, Loki has a lot of big fans. And I, I, I think they'll try to keep him around, but I don't think he'll be full on MCU. Maybe because, I mean, we know that, that the multiverse is coming with madness of, of multiverse or multiverse of madness, whatever it's called, Dr. Strange mm-hmm. 2. Um, so maybe we'll get a little bit of him in there, but I think his main thing is going to be, he's going to, if he sticks around, Mm-hmm. He'll be sticking around in this show with the TVA. I, I, that's my guess anyway, because I don't see how they can put him back in without completely disrupting the entire everything we've already just seen and and the right. impact of it. Which I hate when they undo stuff like that. You know, like Joe yeah. Stark sacrificed his his life. You can't just take that away and be like, oh, the whole timeline changed. Yeah, we're gonna erase it and we're gonna do a rewind. I don't like that either. I and then that. and you know, barring that. You, you spend a lot of time on something that you know you're going to erase anyway so they've got to do something with them i think you're right i yeah. think you're going to stick around as a thing i would lo- listen i could watch 
a show with him and Owen Wilson like forever. Like it could go on like 30 seasons. I'd probably watch right. it. It's right. so funny. It so. is. <laughs> it's great. It's great. I love it. I love it. I love the whole thing. Um, still freaked out that, you know, all this important technology is 70 style mechanical everything, but I guess that's the aesthetic. It's, it's giving me, um, like almost like Beetlejuice vibes almost. I mean, it's just like, and even, um, what do you call it? What do you, the, the Bruce Willis one where he's like having the save the girl. What is that one? Um, oh, I'll remember that. I remember it later, but, um, it's like some of those, some of those um, sci-fi movies we saw, like really, really get really what you're popular. About now. Yeah, and the and Fifth Element. Really called either Fifth Element. Yes. Yeah, it's like we we saw them really. They really got popular in the '90s, and they had that sort of old timey meets futuristic. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, is I'm wondering, is that a is that an aesthetic uh, that um, <laughs> I mean, or something, or is this just me, just their way of saying that the time the the TVA does what they want because they're outside of time and space so if they find something that works they keep it and if they don't they change it is that what it is i think we'll find out i'm not too sure if the tva is a good thing or a bad thing i'm i'm in that like i don't know and do the timekeepers have the best of intentions like who's to say they're the ones that can choose which path is the right path right Mm -hmm. just because they're like these what does he call them space lizards is that what he calls them yes (laughs) 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 <laughs> That's so great. but I'm, I'm just i'm interested in intrigue and i think i think kang will show up eventually kang the conqueror because he's t- tied into time travel and um i'm not sure if it'll be in loki because there's mm-hmm. only six episodes and i've seen two you've seen two there's only four left yeah i don't know but i do I, think this is something that's going to continue on with more seasons i i really do and i think it'll yeah. completely tie in to the greater picture um over the long run i, re- I really really do I really hope so. Um, one more thing I wanted to talk about is um, they didn't. It wasn't as much in in episode one, but you'll see they'll see a lot of it in episode two. Is they're wiping the timeline? Yeah. You, they throw a bomb into the timeline. They basically basically blow it up. I mean, like yeah, they just disintegrate with that little that little thing. It changes <laughs> color and it's like they nuke it. It nukes. They I nuke. mean, they nuke, you nuke. <laughs> disintegrating. They're like. This seems to be a lot. I mean, I I, I was hoping for a men in black flash, you know, camera or something. No, they don't don't have anything left. They completely, you got to keep Dr. Strange's rewind thing. Yeah, they they prune the branches, so to speak, right? If there's a branch, right, that comes off of the tree that it shouldn't be, they prune. Mm -hmm. Because aren't they called, I think they said prune the timeline too. I think, yeah, prune the timeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're literally just cutting that branch off, just getting rid of it. It's going to die. They, it's crazy. But guys, they do it with a nuke. They do it with a nuke. It that that goes back to your... All that stuff disintegrates. Is crazy. Well, that goes back to you saying, are, you're not sure whether they're good or bad. Because yeah. I'm like, oh, these guys are awesome. They're, they're awesome. And then they're like nuking the timeline. I'm like, wait, huh? <laughs> wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> that, oh, this is more to talk about next week because we can't really talk about episode two in depth. But there is in this episode, oh, I don't even know if I want to go here. Um, so in this episode of Mobius, it, they kind of say that basically the timekeepers have created these TVA agents, right? Like out of thin mm-hmm. air, like they were just created. And mm-hmm. they get into it a little more in episode two. And I have a theory that's got nothing backing it up yet in, in the show. So this is not spoiler. This is literally just my brain. Mm-hmm. Um, as may, maybe I don't know if they were created or like if they were plucked from timelines maybe they have passed I don't know I have a theory going like maybe they just created them out of thin air I guess they can destroy stuff out of thin air but how interesting would it be if if these people have other lives somewhere maybe they were variants themselves that they I don't know I don't know oh my god I oh my I god I have to I can't I can't I can't I can't I could go I'm thinking way. of something I'm thinking of something I can't say because it's okay. Episode two, watch. Episode two. I know, I know, I know. We'll talk about it off air because that's what I'm thinking too. I know exactly you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, she's badass and she gets even more badass in, in episode two. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, okay. Anyway, okay, no, stop. we're gonna we're gonna get in trouble. We're about to get shot with darts. Hi. I know okay. the darts oh. are coming here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but episode two is tomorrow, you guys, and you will all get to see it and be on the same same wavelength as us so we'll discuss that more in depth definitely 
Yeah. For sure. Yeah, and if you have a theory, get get in the comments and let us know because we were itching. We're itching to talk about this, and I want to know if you guys see the same thing we're seeing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I told myself after WandaVision, no more theories. The first time I was watching this Please. episode, <laughs> the little kids like pointed to the thing of the devil. Like when they, he asked, Mobius asked who did it. I was like, Mephisto. Yep. I'm like, no, I did no, too. No, <laughs> I did too. And I and I'm like, okay, my husband cannot see this because he and I fought over Loki, the Loki Mephisto thing with yeah. WandaVision. Yeah. Um, we were we had arguments. Well, like real big arguments over no it was Mephisto no it's Loki it's, and it was neither of them yeah. um but, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I so this is gonna like, bring that back <laughs> oh, Mephisto. I know so listen anyway. Mephisto's coming somewhere somewhere Mephisto's in there I doing saw, something <laughs> I would think so but someone said something that makes sense that kind of annoys me and I'm kind of like oh Debbie Downer here but I think it's in China but in somewhere they're not allowed to like portray the devil in any way that is so the yeah, show wouldn't be, be able to air there if mm-hmm. Mephisto came in, which I'm like that. <sighs> and and that, that's exactly right. That was my thought. I was like, oh, oh. Debbie Downer, because it's nice so accurate. I really want Mephisto. So that stinks. I was sad. Well, that just dampens the whole thing. Then I okay. know. I was like, thanks for telling me, and I have to tell everybody so they can be bummed out. Yep. Like me. Because wouldn't it be cool if it turns out Mephisto had a hand in every single one of these things? It would make even in Falcon and Winter Soldier was making the 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 agent the um that serum. Yeah, that would make. They got the formula from him. Listen, I'm telling you, they're gonna eventually do that. Hopefully, I would love to see that. Can you? I mean, listen, Marvel, you can do this, okay? And you can just like look at version for China. They're fine. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) Make a version for China where. It's um you can change like, Mephisto's name, yeah, and just make him someone else. But I don't know, make it Loki. I don't care. Make but, it Loki. <laughs> that way, my that way we have two versions. I'll be right, my husband will be right, and then all this <laughs> exactly. oh, there'll be no more fighting. You were both correct. Right. No, we'll find <laughs> something else to fight over. Um, but anyway, <laughs> we're comic nerds, both of us, and we all we have all the theories. Like, yeah, that's my husband and I. Too. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, we don't fight over who's doing the dishes. We fight over is it really Loki or Mephisto in behind right. us? Yeah. And then it's neither, and you're like, well, at least we were both wrong. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let us know what your theories are. We want to hear them. We want to yes. hear them. And we'll get into this more. I mean, it's going to be this topic of conversation for the next four weeks, five weeks, however many weeks it is. So oh, yeah. we'll definitely be talking about it for sure. Yes. Yes, it's yes. But so. uh so let's change gears though. Sweet tooth. We both watched a while back. Mm-hmm. which from Marvel to DC yeah. I really loved it I've yet to really deep dive into the comics I know you have at least a little bit yeah um, and uh I'm I'm really looking forward to a season two is it official that there's a season two yet there's got um I don't know if it's official yet I can I, let me dig around for just a half a second but um I I've I've only heard good things about Sweet Tooth it's, it's number one on Netflix um or was the last time I looked um so, you know, it, it, it should get an, an, a second season. I, I mean, so usually. Because, listen, we both like Jupiter's Legacy and they canceled that thing already and we're really sad about it. But I know. And they left it on a cliffhanger. So, which speaking of Sweet Tooth, they left it on a cliffhanger. So I'm yeah. really hoping for more. Um, I really enjoyed the season. I, I think it's going to get dark, though. It's going to get real dark. I mean, you have humans hunting essentially humans. I mean, they're hybrids, sure, but they look like humans with like, maybe some animal body parts except for that gopher kid that i don't know what that is but mm-hmm. sure, i digress yeah he's You're like hunting children than child but uh there's people yeah. yeah hunting them down which is crazy and it's only going to get worse because they're getting more and more like they literally just took over that zoo and to oh and then they're experimenting the cute little them. gopher thing the gopher baby had to okay yeah had to run and all those cute little kids yeah. I know there because there was a good amount of them there because they put out those um, flyers right that you're safe here and then mm-hmm. those those hunters what are they called the last the, men or the last called? men the last the men, men. Mm-hmm. oh my gosh that sounds so like yeah um, I don't think there's been a season two in, um, released yet yeah usually uh, I think they probably official. make them wait a couple of weeks but I can imagine there will hopefully be one like you said I've only heard good things right and uh, and they left on a cliffhanger so like I need more. 
Mm -hmm. And there's a lot more source material to come from. And the thing that's good about Sweet Tooth, I think we talked about this last week, was that there's there's a finite end, right? There's the beginning. Yep. There's 40 the issues. So they could easily plan, what, like four seasons and then make sure, you know? So hopefully, I mean, maybe that's something we'll, we'll talk to Jim Mickle about when we talk with him a little bit later today. It's a good question for him. Uh, yes. but, but I feel like that's something you can plan for, right? You know, when it's going to end and hopefully don't continue on, you know, like mm -hmm. just, just do the story. Maybe of course, change things here and there. Um, but like, that's the issue I think Game of Thrones had, honestly, uh, which is a whole nother topic. But when they went off the course of the books, they ran out of source material and they went. Yeah. Th there were no more. They, he didn't finish the story. <laughs> no, <laughs> like the original source that. didn't finish it. Right, yeah. Right. So they had to come up with their own thing and that's not so good. Sweet tooth. We have. A beginning and an end. And then mm -hmm. do that story, end it in a similar way, and everyone is happy. So. Yeah, I, 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 I'm with you on that one. I think that they can plot out however many seasons it's going to take, um, because from what I've seen so far, they're 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 keeping with the spirit of the story. They're keeping you know the basics there. There are details that are changed. Yes, there are some there are some race you know the races of some of the people are changed. You know, there's not as many white people in the story. Probably, I'm, I'm just waiting. It changed in the positive way. It's, it did, it did. But I, I, I'm just waiting for there to be some fanboy, you know, rant well, over, over all that. Well, there is some. I'm positive it's somewhere. I, <laughs> right. I think that I think that the character changes were good. I, I really do. I, I mean, I, and you know, even with making Sweet Tooth younger, making Gus younger, mm -hmm. I think that was a good thing too because I mean, it made it to where he was more. He's he's sweeter he was a he was a cuter kid he yeah. was so sweet he was so precious um and he was i don't know he's just i don't think i would have been into it as much if it would have been this um teenager that i'm seeing in the comics right. you know well, because the teenagers are sassy and annoying and they have attitude and like we all know that because we all were mm -hmm. one and, and they're downer uh, mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. and so i'm interested when we talk to jim later later in this episode i mean i think we'll talk to him about his reasons right for the changes that they made so i'm interested to see why but i think it's it gets a wider audience and like you said i mean listen you put a teenager as the star it's either going to be really good or really annoying like mm -hmm. and you don't want to take do you want to take that risk on your opening season probably not right right because there's a there's a whole scene where gus gets into um the bag of the guy he's uh going with um tommy um yeah. that he's walking with um and and two uh that's one of the actually the the racial the race changes because in the comic uh he's an old white guy i think this version is better because i believe this guy can protect against yeah. anything better than the old white guy can in the comics you know mm -hmm. and he's more believable to me um but where gus is like you know eating all of his food and he's like covered in chocolate you yeah. cannot yeah. make a 16 year old or however old teenager right. look cute doing that no i would and, be like you ate my chocolate what the heck yeah like the only like, reason why, all right <laughs> yeah like, like the only reason why he didn't die because he was cute you know <laughs> I, I, that's true i would have been mad and he like took medication there too whatever yep. that's about uh-huh we didn't really we don't know do we do we know did they say in the no. show no yeah. i didn't i didn't really know that one and as a matter of fact i forgot about that part yeah. oh we gotta ask about Cause, that because then he had to find his medication remember that's why he didn't put him mm -hmm. on the train uh, and that's partly why they got caught uh, because mm -hmm. it took long because he had him sniffing around for uh, for that medication. So I'm curious if it's something he really needs, what kind of medication it is. Like mm -hmm. I feel like hopefully they'll touch on that. Uh, right, because there's so. it seems to be in a, in the, in like high demand. But yeah, yeah I just I th I really love this story. You've got this dynamic of this big, huge, scary guy and this cute little cuddly kid, <laughs> and they're you know, and, and it's not so much the big guy protecting the kid because the kid seems to be doing something for the guy yes oh he's, he's like him softening around, him up. giving him a little bit of a heart I yes yeah yes i like that whole dynamic and i think that it fits better um with the like character with the, with the actor they have the actors yeah. they have you know so i really really like it i think it's really cute and um giving names christian convery is a uh, gus yeah. Um. And Nanzo Anansi is um Tommy. Listen, so, I need to talk to yeah. him at some point and ask him why he did Artemis Fowl, but we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> I, listen, I, I loved the Artemis Fowl books. We're way off topic, but that movie was trash. Anyways, sorry, <laughs> bad. 
Uh, but I was like excited because I was watching. I go, what do I know him from? And I just look it up and I went, oh, because I've blocked that uh, movie from my memory. That's why I couldn't place him for a minute. Uh, but he's fantastic in this. I mean, he was great yeah. in that movie. That movie is just junk. So yeah. it's not his fault. It's that they're completely right. off from the book. <laughs> right. Like way too much. It was reshoots. It was a bad idea. Mm-hmm. It was a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Um, but I adore him in this. And I thought at that one point I thought he died. I was crying watching it when he got shot, like towards yes. the, end of the last episode or the second to last. I think the end of the second to last episode it happened. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, are you kidding me? You can't take him away. What's Gus going to do? Like, I was so upset. But now you've gotten I'm this sure. far. So, yeah, you've gotten this far. And then, oh, I, Gus, I mean, like, dude, dude, you grow up with your dad telling you how scary people are scary. Why did you radio the humans? Because you should have been scared of them at, by this point. What the heck is going on? I didn't, that part it's did good. not. <laughs> well, yeah. Like, I'm yeah. gonna not listen to what my dad said because he got mad at his dad, mm-hmm. and then like he had that dog and he threw it in the fire. The dog made from his socks. <laughs> so I was like, "That's the sweetest thing." But, like, uh, but what what really got me is when they like dove into like that wasn't his dad, which was kind of a surprise. He was basically a test tube baby. Like his mom isn't even really his mom, which I guess I never expected. I didn't see that coming at all. Are we sure that he wasn't genet- He's not genetically hers though. Well, I guess maybe we're not sure, right? Maybe it could have some, that's, that's possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he was the first of these hybrid babies. Was he actually yeah. physically born from her body? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but the but fact that it could have been her DNA also her experimenting. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. know. But right. That was a twist. I did not see coming. Well, and then the dad being like, <laughs> he was on a date, man. <laughs> I know. It was on a date, and his date ended up with him having to take care of this kid with antlers. His date did end like that. That's what a first date. A first date. First date. Like, first like date. take this kid, <laughs> run away. Pretty woman run, thinks you're gonna go run. back to the yeah. Thinks huh? you're gonna go back and you know maybe get maybe you know really hit it off. Maybe get a second date. Who knows? No. No, she never. So I mean, do we think she's gonna be? You think she's do you think she's gonna be dead now do we know because they just said she left to look for him to look i don't for think she's gonna be dead i think she's alive heard from her again you think she's alive mm-hmm. i think she's alive i think she's alive i think she's around and i think that she knows since she made him i think she knows how to stop everything it just got too chaotic for her to do anything about it you know maybe yeah yeah uh, meanwhile i'm, I'm meanwhile, excited yeah. to see more it makes me want to read more i need to like dive into it Right. And, and I am so I'm, 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 I'm trying to binge these, like binge the comics, <laughs> um, um, as well, because I'm just like, okay, I have to know more. I have to know more. Um, but I do know that, you know, um, but another character I wanted to talk about was the, the, the doctor. Yeah. So I know. will she find, will she find Gus before the doctor gets to him? Because all the doctor wants to do is save his wife. Right. Is cute or not. He's butchering you because he's got to keep his woman alive. So hopefully, well, isn't he with the doctor right now? Is he with the doctor? And he said, "Find someone else." Remember? So, so the doctor has has Gus now, and and you're right. He said, "Find other people." So that's why they went and got those kids from the zoo. But Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, is he going to work through all those kids and get to down to just him and Gus before the the mom shows up? That's a fair question. Um. Because he obviously, I think because Gus is the only one that talks or that they think talks. And then they're realizing mm-hmm. there's some other ones to talk. I think it depends on if you were raised by a human or not. Like if they were just out in the wild, they're not going to have anyone to teach them to talk. Right. Right. So like Gus and then that little girl. Wendy. Uh, the yeah. big girl. She's Wendy. Yeah. She's so older. <laughs> yeah. Her I love her. Yeah. She's Wendy. Adorable. She's so adorable. And she's oh, so and her mom is one they need to worry about too. Her mom's not her yeah. natural mom either. Like her. Right. Um, or, yeah so um that like this human nature thing where yes a lot of the humans are not right out there they're mm-hmm. hunting these people but there's a few who, humans who have who, who have taken these hybrids in and, and raised them you know which i mm-hmm. i like them showing the softer side of human nature even just a little bit you know yeah and i like them showing that you know how they made family with people who yeah. accept them 
Right. Um, except that Wendy's going to find her sister pretty soon. I hope she gets her connected with her sister pretty soon. That'd be so great. But um, I love the fact that she found a mom, found a home, and they started, you know, taking in. I didn't realize that we're taking in hybrids <laughs> until the kids started popping up. It's like, oh, I okay. <laughs> I do think there was a little bit of uh, a jump there. It did feel like that too, because you didn't really see a lot of them. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, oh, okay. Right. Um, but I, because I figured we saw them have those signs out there, but I didn't know anybody was actually showing up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so that was good. And yeah. I'm interested to see, I mean, if we have to see them like actually kill some of these hybrids, I, I don't know that I can watch it. I mean, I will, but that's like hard. You're going to watch them kill mm-hmm. like a little kid. Cause we haven't really seen, we've seen them hunting them. Mm-hmm. we've seen like the blood on the floor where she had experimented the other doctor had experimented um but i don't think we've actually physically seen one of them get hurt yet have we no i don't i i haven't I unless i blocked it out i don't think i have i but that's one thing i wanted to ask jim about is okay yeah how dark okay in here? <laughs> yeah and how how did you you know kind of temper that you know um because it's, it's got to happen with the way this story goes. It's going to have to happen. And I mean, I think it's rated TV 15, I believe. So, so that feels like the right age, but it's still, uh, I don't know. I don't want to see it. <laughs> yeah. I'll be watching like this. <laughs> I know me too. Especially because when it's kids, like that, that's like, I love blood and gore in my, in my movies and my shows, but like not when it's kids. Not with the little one that looks like a gopher and he's all hairy and everything. I don't know. No. He's weird looking to me. I don't mind if they get rid of him. No, just kidding. That was still mean. I'm sorry. I apologize. That was horrible. <laughs> this is adorable. <laughs> I can just can't he sacrifice. feels like he doesn't fit into me as much because the other ones have such big human qualities. And he's like this tiny little, I don't know. He's adorable. I think, I think it's he's where we're going, you know? Yeah. Where it's eventually going to go. Yeah. Because he's younger. Maybe he's younger than everyone. He is younger. Time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's yeah, cute. He his little hat fell off. So I was like, oh no, he doesn't even have his hat with him. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, uh, yeah, we love Sweet Tooth. As you can tell, we could talk about this forever. But uh, right now we're going to get into our interview with Jim Mickle. We're so excited. He's the one who adapted the comics into this incredible show. Yeah, so, uh, and he directed. And he directed, directed as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. so we're excited we are um this is gonna get interesting so they let us have him for 15 minutes i don't know if that's a good thing for him or a bad thing but you know let's do it (laughs) hi i'm i'm jonita davis with the hollywood critics um association long box hi Uh, jonita um my colleague tessa is here i believe am Uh, i'm here but i have i have real bad internet because i'm literally in in the woods but i'm gonna pop on video and wave with no audio and then pop back to just no video <laughs> watch this yeah. it's fun yeah <laughs> i'm jealous wherever you are i'm jealous i know right um <laughs> she went like cave uh like cave exploring or something just a few minutes ago <laughs> i was just exploring not, I yeah did. We did not Whoa. plan for her to be in the woods while we're talking about Sweet Tooth. I mean, that was so yeah. just last minute. So, <laughs> <It's> very <laughs> apropos. <laughs> um, but we loved that. We loved the series. Loved the um, loved everything about it. And then I started reading the comics, going through, flipping through. <sighs> that you did a lot of work. Um, <laughs> you know, one of our first questions is, you know, where did this project come from? How did you get attached to this project? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Were you a fan? Yes, I had read it when it first came out, like 2010 or so. Um, and I really loved it at the time. I just made a movie called Stakeland, which is very similar. It's kind of apocalyptic and, and, and um, similar relationship. And was kind of thinking like, is there a movie here? Because this is like, it feels like things that we've done, which I don't want to go back to that world, but there's a real twist here with the kid with antlers and just what that means to be half human and half hybrid and kind of part of this world, but part of not. So it always kind of hung around for, you know, a couple of years. Um, and it wasn't until like 2016, um, I was uh, uh, talking to Team Downey um, about a couple of things. And they said, you know, we've been trying to, we're at Warner Brothers when they have this property, Sweet Tooth. We've been trying to find like a, a series version of that. You know, are you aware of it? Can we send it to you? And I was like, I literally have it here on my shelf, you know? Um, and I went back and reread it 
And it was really interesting reading it then because, you know, the first time in 2010, it was, you know, it was the era of uh, Walking Dead and, and, and Stakeland and Cormac McCarthy's The Road. And it was like, there was just a certain sort of breath of, of post-apocalyptic kind of storytelling. And six years later, you know, it was like the election had just happened, you know, um, I just had a movie fall apart, you know, a lot of the things that were in the book were actually kind of happening in real life in weird ways. And it just felt like, wow, this is, um, it was a whole new experience to read it at that time and, and think about what that would mean, um, turning it into uh, a, a series. So um, yeah, it was, a, it was an evolution, I would say. Um, yeah, and it, you, the Walking Dead uh, aesthetic is, is certainly there. Um, mm-hmm. I was telling Tessa that it feels like you took the Walking Dead and turned it into Matilda. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> can you talk about some of the decisions you made and, you know, when you were thinking about, okay, I had to take this book and put it up and, you know, all of this, like you said, it, it's a different time and, mm-hmm. you know, you wanted to make it timely, but still not as depressing. I don't yeah. want to say <laughs> But so what were some of the decisions you made and when, you know, you were, you sat down and you're like, I've got to bring this story to life. Yeah. Well, I think the thing, it's hard to find the right, I know what you mean. It's hard to find the right word because it's like, is it depressing? Is it, there's a melancholy, I think the comic book, I think there's a sadness. I think Jeff paints with, with brushes of sadness in a way that can be incredibly beautiful. And I think um, for me at the time, it was like, you know, does the world want sadness right now? I don't, and, and, a lot of people do you know I think it it was more about just like do I want to spend the next few years of my life sort of thinking in sad and in in only sadness or sort of painting a story in only sadness and I did a movie called we are we are which is filled with sadness you know and I felt like I had already kind of gotten some of that on my system a little bit but also just thinking about like it's a big thing going from just drawings on a page to like having to accomplish this stuff and what kind of an audience is that going to go to and I think um, the thing that I kept kind of coming back to it, it was like, what's the version that we haven't seen of the, of this kind of a story of the apocalypse. And really it was Gus was the sort of the main thing that kept coming back to is like, he's the hero of the story. He's the heart of the story. And ultimately he's a very innocent character born in a very innocent place, um, born in what I think is sort of the ultimately ultimate utopia of just like the woods, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, you know, and he sort of had this simplicity and he's like raised his own food and, you know, he's had sort of the perfect upbringing and now he's got to go out into the world and sort of see what America looks like having never seen what it looked like the first time. And I just thought that was sort of the the key point of this thing more than anything was this boy's experience going out into the world. And as much as the comic book, I think focused a lot on how that innocence was sort of beaten out of him by what he experienced along the way, it felt like there was also an opportunity to do, the the flip side of that which is to sort of show you know these kind of cold characters you know what what came from Gus and the hope that he had from just sort of his upbringing so it felt like there was just different you know hopefully we still stick to the sadness I think there's a there's an emotion to the series that I think is definitely inspired by Jeff and how he sort of spins those things um but hopefully there's there's also the counterpoints to that too yes definitely and i and i really really love that you know yeah there's definitely still a sadness especially in that final episode um when gus is meeting you know up with the other kids it's not like in the comics when he's meeting up with these other kids because those kids in the comics look oh my gosh they look like nightmares i'm so glad that bobby looks a lot better on screen (laughs) yeah bobby's a whole that's a whole podcast (laughs) (laughs) yeah so um i i wanted to also know you know what you, did you put any easter eggs in there along the way for people in the comics i i think i saw a few but did you intentionally put in things like okay if they know the comics they'll they'll get this part yeah definitely i mean stuff from the lemire universe you know there's definitely little uh, uh little snippets of other parts of other comic books that he's done that are that are there for fans because he's definitely got you know it's not literally a lemire universe but he's definitely sort of plays in the same canvas a lot so um definitely some of that definitely aspects of the book itself that are sort of sprinkled throughout for fans but also hopefully some of the mythology stuff that people can kind of see where we might be going it was fun to sort of tease those things in different ways great and were you worried about fans um 
kind of getting upset about some of your decisions mm-hmm. because I know mm-hmm. like uh, Jeopard, um, he was mm-hmm. like in, this old scary white guy in the book. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then you've got, you know, he's this big black guy in mm-hmm. the, on screen, which mm-hmm. I think that, you know, I'd rather have the on-screen Jeopard because he looks like he could like protect me better in the one in the comics <laughs> is scary. Um, and well, and then what he does in the comics is scary too. But yeah. um, have you had, did you anticipate any black backlash from the fans for like doing things like that, um, mm-hmm. making those changes? And mm-hmm. has there been any? I anticipated that there would be some. I think there has been some, but not nearly as much as I thought, to be honest. Um, I mean, I think there's a lot of people who um, I completely sympathize with. You know, you, you fall in love with what exists for 10 years, you know, and, and, and that's sort of what your, your version of that is. And, you know, it's incredibly, you know, like, a, you know, he does, Jeff taps into an emotion that is incredibly raw and real. And a lot of people relate to that. And um, I, you know, I thought that there would be a bit more pushback, you know, um, from some of the decisions that we made or people feeling like it's lighter or something or disney or something, which is, which was not our intent. I think our intent was just to, you know, as Jeff says, I'm going to steal an answer from Jeff that he's given that I think is very good, where it's like the comic book, I think the, the darkness and sort of the horror um, was at the forefront and the sort of the heart and the sweetness kind of snuck up on you. Um, in the comic book, I think, you know, we, we sort of did the opposite in a way, you know, we sort of lured you in with the sweetness and the kindness and then, and then um, allowed the sort of the horror to sneak up and sort of the darkness. So I think um, it's, I've been, I've been pleasantly surprised that I think a lot of people who love the comic book are like, I also love the TV show, even though they're two different things and I love them for different reasons. I love and respect both, which is like the be- the best you could ask for. That is amazing. That is very, very <clears throat> amazing. Um, um, I also want to, you know, look at if, if, if we can kind of glimpse mm-hmm. into season two, mm-hmm. how dark are we going to go without giving too much away? <laughs> how dark is it going to go? I mean, <laughs> well, we don't, we don't know. We, we literally uh, finished season one just like a week or two ago. You know, it was oh. a, it was a massive put. Yeah. It was a massive push because we had, we were already sort of up against the gun and we were sort of aiming for like a July delivery or something. And then at some point Netflix said, you know, while we were still kind of looking at each other, like, are we going to be able to finish this in time? They came and said, can you give it to us a month earlier, which was insane. So it just went to, um, you know, took an already crazy post-process because there's obviously visual effects. There's obviously a lot of music. It's wall to wall music. Our composer, Jeff Grace suddenly was, you know, having to score you know 45 minutes of original music every week you know one after another um there's a ton of sound work you know all the all the hybrids you know that's those are long sessions to kind of go through and get people to do different voices and different sounds and try to figure out what the right thing is um the color correction sessions are massive so it's a very long process and um we only finished it within a couple days really of 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 the show coming out which was made binging it a really surreal experience because you're you're still sort of like you have to get out of like i'm not working on this mode i can just sit back and you know we're never going to fix this we're never going to tweak that shade of yellow again you know now we're just watching it so um so we're really just kind of celebrating one right now and seeing where things go and, and waiting to find out if there is a two before getting too um ahead of ourselves i guess on, on, on what we do that's so impressive wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um I, there better be a two. I mean, I will leave the charge. <laughs> if there's not, yeah. I, the cliffhanger. I'm with you, Joe. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I want to talk about Gus, the, the, the guy, the kid you found for Gus. Did you, how many kids did you go through before you, you're like, okay, that's the one that he, mm-hmm. this is Gus right here. Yeah. He honestly was like the, I keep saying it's the sixth one. I kind of want to look it up as we talk. Um, (laughs) He was, you know, you go into that thing and you like, you write a story that's going to be about a kid like this, you know, let's see. Oh, here's the original email. I can tell you. Wow. Um, um, One, two, three, four, five, six. (laughs) Six. (laughs) You were right. Uh, so six december 10th 2018 so um 
you go into it and you think it's you know you're 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 thinking wow we've put so much onto this young character that's in literally every scene of the story and the entire thing is told through his point of view um you know kid actors good kid actors are hard to find great ones are impossible to find and so you kind of go through the whole thing thinking man you know this is going to be months long and it's going to be you know we're going to be looking at hundreds of kids and it's ultimately going to be some kid you know in a mall in minnesota that somebody stumbles upon that's like you know like just this unicorn and then he was literally the sixth one so carmen cubar casting director um she did stranger things i think she's got a really great eye for for um young actors like that and um he came on the first day and i just remember we were just so we were just laughing out loud it's just like oh my god if there's christian this is going to be the greatest search ever. We're going to be rolling in it. And then literally like months go by and you're like, I think it's just Christian from day one. The kid we all fell in love with the first, like, why are we overthinking this? It's Christian. He's amazing. So yeah. Yeah. It's like, why are we still doing this? Yeah. Um, so one last question. I heard about God's country. Uh-huh. Can, you, yeah. can you tell any, can you say anything about <laughs> that project at all? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I um, I found that back in like 2019, um, Legendary was working on it. Um, I saw this book sitting on their coffee table and I, and I was like, you know, um, what the heck is that? I love that cover. And they kind of told me the concept. They said, you know, Donnie's writing the script on it right now. And, and I love the concept. Um, and I went home and just started reading it and I just fell head over heels for it. And, and um, you know, I'm not, you know, I've done a couple of comic book things now, but I'm not traditionally a, a, a comic book guy. I think I'm much more of like independent comic books and, and more graphic novel kind of thing. And there was just something about that that I loved in my own sort of family history that felt like it lined up and being able to sort of tell that kind of a, you know, myth, so a sense of myth, I guess. And so um, we've been working on it, you know, ever since then and, and um, still um, looking to get it set up somewhere and, and find the right time to do it. Um, but uh, uh, hopefully that's what I get to do next. I really love that story. I mean, that's what they're saying is coming next for you. So I can't wait. I can. <laughs> so, and I cannot tell you how happy I am to know that you're a comics guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've loved your stuff i um i've got oh, onto your work thanks. um since happen Leonard when, when oh, you were doing thanks. that series yeah yeah, I, yeah. Re re I was doing recaps and reviewing i'm like this is some great tv yeah. um <laughs> thanks, thanks. So. i love that i love that show <laughs> you know it was always oh, it's such a crazy experience now because it's netflix obviously just massive you know base and knows how to get there and, and i always felt like happen Leonard was this tiny little thing where he sort of operated in the space and you know the the people who loved it really loved it um yeah it's always nice to hear <laughs> thank you so much for get, taking the time to answer our questions you got any more questions tessa i mean i just want to just say how incredible the the whole thing is and i am curious where the decision came to make gus younger because he seems quite a bit younger than he is in the comics in the show um i think in the comic books he's 10 um he was nine when we cast him uh, christian was nine when we cast him um, and, um, some of that was just knowing, you know, we were going to shoot a pilot and then we were going to go away and have to write a whole season and come back and do a show that was kind of like, you know, we didn't want to do that thing where you like, you know, get a 13 year old and pretend that they're 10 and suddenly you're in the middle of episode <laughs> two and they, you know, grow a beard. And, you know, so we knew that we wanted to actually skew probably a little younger if possible than anything. Um, really it was like, it was just Christian, you know, whatever he was, we're like, we'll make it work for him because he's so, he's so darn good. He's so perfect. Wow. Yeah, he is so cute. Yeah. And he can carry the show. That's great. That's yeah. great. Um, well, <clears throat> I think our time that's our time. Thank you so much. Cool. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Enjoy the woods. I hope you guys enjoyed that interview with Jim. I know we had a blast talking with him. You guys, I had some connection issues. Obviously, as we saw, my video wasn't on as much as it should have been. Uh, but I did have the audio and I did listen in. And uh, man, it was such a great interview. Loved getting to know more about the show that Joe and I have raved about. You know, we loved it. Uh, love getting to know that he's a bit of a comic nerd. Wasn't I that know. exciting? I know. I mean, when I like, like picked up my book and it was like showing it to him and he's like, turn around and pointing to his. I'm like, oh my God, this is great. I know. This is great. You know, like you're the coolest. Listen, right. And I mean, it kind of sounds like there might be a season two in the works. I know he tried to make it sound like they don't know anything, but. Yeah, he was smiling too hard. He was smiling too hard. 
And, you know, the, as, this thing has been number one on Netflix, um, Sweet Tooth. Um, so there's no way. There's no way they're not going to do a season two. I mean, and, you know, they've already um, greenlit another, you know, comic movie from an end. I mean, these are like independent comics, guys. These are not yeah. like the mainstream stuff. And for um, him to hit the, you know, ball out of the park as well as he did, that, that's, that's amazing. So, yeah, we'll definitely get a season two. It's gonna be dark there's gotta it. be a season two and the way they ended it i mean uh, i'm looking forward to it there's gotta be because I, I am yeah it's gonna be darker though i mean it's <laughs> it's gonna be darker like um and yeah I, i'm just glad that he's like conscious of you know lemire's way of doing things which is i legit walking dead like bodies everywhere <laughs> you know piles of bodies and and sh- I, I'm going to send you a picture of Bobby the Gopher in yeah. the comic. It, it'll scare you. You may have nightmares about him. Nightmares? Is he that he's, scary? He's that scary. Yes. Oh boy. I mean. So right. yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think I think that you know, and I I haven't heard much backlash. I know he said there was some, but there's not been much. Mm-hmm. So I think that coupled with the popularity, definitely season two. Yeah, there's got to be a season two. Plus, there's enough source material, and like we talked about earlier in the show, there's a finite ending. So I can imagine that he has a plan, he has a vision, and hopefully, we get to see it all come to fruition. Yeah, because I was reading. Um, he's at where he is is um, it's it's in book one, the volume one. I think that's the first um six or eight issues. So he's still very much so in the beginning in season one. There's still a lot of room to stretch, you know. So I, I can't wait for more. And now I feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna really dive into the comics and hopefully be well past this by the time we do get a season two. So yes. very much looking yes. forward to yes. it. Yeah, and hopefully we'll get a chance to, to talk to him again where we can press more information on him. So yeah. Yes, I would great. love that. I would love that for sure. Oh man, it was again such a great interview with Jim Mickle. Uh, we're so excited. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. And uh, we will see you live next week on Tuesday, as always, 11 a.m. Eastern time. We'll be back live to discuss a whole lot of stuff. Loki yep. included, of course, maybe where we think it's going. I've got some updated comic suggestions, which we'll get into next week after watching the first two episodes. So that'll be a lot of fun. But we are not the only show here on the Hollywood Critics Association YouTube, are we, Joe? No, we're not. Oh, don't forget, but Doom Patrol when we get back to Doom Patrol. Yeah, yes, so catch up. So catch up. Yeah. It's so good. Um, but yeah, um, there's like so much content during the week. So you have Pop Council on Mondays, hosted by um, Jamie Philbrick and Wendy Lee Zaney, and then Trending in Hollywood on Fridays, um, hosted by Scott Menzel and Dimitri Panos. Then What to Stream Thursdays, hosted by Mark Morgan Rojas and Lupe Rodriguez Haas. Horrifically Horrifying also is weekly by Heather Wixon and Kevin Taft. So, you know, stay tuned. I mean, there's, there's more, uh, way more content. everything's worth watching guys we promise so if you haven't already subscribed and hit the notification bell make sure you do so because you don't want to miss out on any of this stuff Mm -hmm. yes yes so um shout out to uh special thanks to netflix for squeezing us in uh special thanks to jeremy platt the producer for you know giving you know hooking us up so Mm -hmm. um and to jim mickle for you know giving us 15 minutes and telling us so much so i know was so exciting and hopefully fingers crossed we can have him on again maybe to promote season two who knows but until next time thanks for watching guys